This conference will now be recorded. So good morning, guys. Uh, this is the infant and young child feeding. Today's topic is well, in a way from the examination point of view, from your practical point of view, is a very, very important topic today. So this may be asked in several ways, whether it's a theory question or a short notes or in viva, different stages of your clinical uh, course. So please pay attention. Now, what is infant and young child feeding? This comprises what all we do. Just observe this graph from the Lancet. Actually, this is from the Lancet 2003. If you look at the various methods, what we can do to prevent under five child deaths. So they have just, just analyzed different, different methodology, the interventions which can bring down the infant mortality or under five mortality actually specifically because so they listed it like this actually descending order. If you look at this, what is most prominent in this graph? Actually, graphs are a little difficult, confusing to work. But this graph is very, very clear. Look at this. The top of it, of all the strategies, of all the strategies, expressed feeding tops the list. Nearly 13% reduction in the under five. So if you concentrate on this one particular topic of the breast feeding alone, you can bring down the under five mortality by 13 percent okay and not so not so very nearer to that is a complementary feeding nearly see half of it six percent again you can bring down by concentrating on the complementary feeding so together breastfeeding and complementary feeding together you can call them infant in child so what does this mean of all the proven preventive health nutritious interventions infant and young child feeding iyfc stands for infant and young child feeding has the single greatest potential impact on survival child survival so this forms the basis of our attention to infant feeding. now Infant, what exactly IYFC? Because I heard the examiners asking the students, what do you understand by IYFC? Many of the students actually they fail to uh, expand it. So we are not familiar with the word. So you may get familiar with this word IYFC. Infant and young child feeding is a set of well-known, recommended, appropriate feeding practices. What is it? Yes, uh, recommended appropriate feeding practices for newborn and children up to two years not only just newborns so newborn and children up to two years so all these recommendations they are clubbed together to form called the iyfc by the who and UNICEF. now these national uh, organizations together so we'll see what is this IYFC. so what exactly you mean by this word appropriate and what is meant by recommendations okay what do you mean by optimal feeding? Optimal feeding by means zero to six months exclusive breastfeeding. Understand? Nothing but exclusive breastfeeding. This is very, very important concept. Please remember no other food, even with water also. So, no, no. So to achieve optimal growth and development and health, both all these things. So this is the first point in the infant mixture. So what is the next after this? The second one is the complementary period. So after six months, what happens? The same nutritionally adequate complementary foods. So whatever foods you introduce, they should be safe to the body, baby, and they should add to the complementing is nothing but addition of this. The breastfeeding to be continued up to two years. So we advise two years even for working mothers also whenever possible. To meet their evolving nutritional needs, you should receive these breastfeedings. So this is according to the global strategy for infant and young child feeding WHO library. So these two remember first is about six months exclusive breastfeeding, six months onwards, nutritionally adequate complementary feeding. These two put together we can't recommend. Mean what are the optimal feeding? All of you know 
the, the breast milk is safe, sound, and sustainable. If you want to answer why breastfeeding, just three very nutshell. If it is two marks question, that is enough. It is safe, it is sound, sustainable. Surakshitam anuvendi mandikai. So, why is it safe? Why is it sound? Why is it sustainable? It depends on if your marks or questions are more, we will elaborate. So, these are the advantages of breastfeeding. All of you must be this slide alone is an essay question. Many times, many times they ask what are the advantages of breastfeeding. Yes, remember when there is a big list like this, actually, what you can do with this, you can classify them. So, how is it actually? The physical, physiological, biochemical, microbiological, immunological, psychological, economical, epidemiological, and maternal aspect. All these from the maternal and family aspects of so the economical and all these things will be baby is not bothered, your parents are bothered. That's so you make a subheadings like this. How is it physically good? It is a pre-warmed, actually. You need not warm it, no, readily available, fluid with normal body temperature, it's expected body temperature. That's all. So it is minor, but more important, the physical, physiological, it has high lactose. The protein which is present, even though it's less compared to other cow's milk and other things, only less than one, one gram per cent. But still, it is easily digestible, ideal for the child. The rich in essential fatty acids, so carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are there. And it has like amylase, lipoprotein lipase, oxidases, lipoperoxidases, and leukocyte myeloperoxidases. There's some of the enzymes, if you remember the one or two enzymes, you're right. So it's biochemically superior because these substances, why is it because the whey protein, usually the whey to casein, casein is the curd part of it. Actually, it may be nutrition has made a harder. Casein is the curdling part. So which you see in a zulu. So the one white white curdling part happens is a casein. And that which remains in the liquid part is a whey protein, like albumin, lactic globulin, other things they contain. So the liquid part of protein is easily, much more easily digested. That's why the proportion of whey to casein in breast milk is 80 to 20. Whereas if you go to the cow's milk, it is 60 to 40. So compared to the proportion is much, much less, you see. So that's why the curd tension with the cow's milk is much higher. Whereas breast milk is much less. So 80-20 is a way to casein ratio. You remember that many times examiners are interested in asking this question. So apart from that ratio, 80 to 20. Way is to casein. That is it. So rich in lactalbumin, lactoferrin. Calcium phosphorus ratio is less than two. Again, this is another important ratio because if this ratio is altered, even if there is a lot of calcium, the phosphorus is not in how it should be half of it. Otherwise, no, the absorption of calcium is increased. So two is calcium is twice the amount of phosphate. So that makes it absorption the cal available calcium, even if it is quantity wise less, it is quality wise better. And lactose itself promotes absorption of calcium regulation. So there is a co-absorption of this. If you go to the microbiological advantages, you know the lactoferrin is a bacteriostatic. Inhibits E. coli. Sorry, coli is actually. It binds iron and makes it available to E. coli. Anyway, because whatever iron is there, no? because I, that's why we advise you even in case of an infection. And there is an infection in gut, you should not do iron supplements. Even the malnutrition management also we see, we advise you first treat malnutrition, then only add iron supplement, even if the child is because the iron is taken up by the bacteria and they utilize it for their growth action. So iron supplementation during infection is a detriment. That's why you should never give iron supplements when the child is in infected stage. First treat infection, then only supplement. Like that. So the lactoferrin it binds iron, so it makes it unavailable. For the if at all there is a gut bacteria like E. coli are there, and that way it helps. Bile salt stimulated lipase. This is another enzyme present in the BSSL. It's called as a bile salt stimulated lipase, and it kills the amoeba, especially the protozoan like amoeba and, and GRD infections. Paraminobenzoic acid, PABA, another substance present in the milk, is a protection against malaria. And SIGA, it is secretory IgA. Very high in concentration of milk, 
and surface protection to the respiratory and GI tracts because IgA it covers forms in covering over the mucosa of respiratory tract and respiratory infections are much less. Immunological, the macrophages, lysozymes, complement, they all offer immunity. That's why many immunological diseases like asthma and various allergies, rhinitis, and all these things are much less common in exclusive respiratory tract. It has supplies of T cells and B cells, lymphocytes, and the bifidus tract, which is present, is a the growth tract, which helps. It's like a prebiotic. Prebiotic difference between probiotic is probiotic is something which bacteria utilizes. The prebiotic is only it encourages those bacteria which help the body. So it is a substrate for the bacteria which take it as a food and they grow. So bifidus bacteria helps the lactobacilli. Lactobacilli is a probiotic. Actually, it is an organism which helps the body. So if you give directly lactobacilli, it becomes a probiotic. If you give some substances which promote lactobacilli, it is a prebiotic. Bifidus factor is one such prebiotic. Psychologically, it is a darn difference because the growth of a child depends upon the emotional bonding also. So for a mother to child bonding to develop, Respiratory is the best one. And it's convenient wise because you don't require to get up in the middle of the night and prepare water alarms. How difficult it is to mother actually child creeps on mosquito for minutes, milk for about four or five times in the night. So every time you have to boil it, you boil bottle, mix powder, and all these things are nuisance, no? So all this, just take the baby to your cook and just that's it. And epidemiologically, you can see the mortality of morbidity. We have seen the previous. Yeah, how the under five mortality is coming down just by one intervention, the exclusive best way. That's why. So the epidemiological, if you continue, the infant mortality and under five mortality, all these things are much, much less the large scale, national level, the community level. And there are unseen advantages to mother also. For example, it helps the involution. So the abdomen is so enlarged, actually, it takes a long time for the abdomen to regress because of the loose skin and actually the enlarged uterus. Has fallen adequately and it takes quite a long time for regression. So, for the oxytocin which is released during the breastfeeding, it helps in contracting, regressing the uterus to normal size, very early it is a thumb size uterus. It has grown enormously, you know. So, it, this helps oxytocin, regular oxytocin releases, helps in evolution. And also, it burns the extra fat that they you know you have seen pregnant women with new fat, they are getting worried most of the time. But all this fat is necessary as a reserve for the additional lactation demands and after pregnancy demands of the mother. So once the baby is out, so it has to be by giving milk, all these additional fat sources have been quickly exhausted. And there is also incidence of breast cancer and ovarian cancer much less in those mothers who have breast with their children. So these are some of the advantages of mothers and for the children. This video, I spent a little time on this because this in itself is an excellent like essay. Okay. Now, there are reflexes associated with this. Is sometimes they're asking what are the reflexes associated because each one is a short note or each slide is a trace for you. So for the release of these two important reflexes, you must remember the one is the prolactin reflex, other is oxytocin reflex. So what are these? The prolactin in the blood, when the baby starts, so this is the afferent stimulus going up this way. So sensory stimulus from the nipple, they produce, they go to the hypothalamus and release prolactin. Prolactin acts on the, and in turn, it acts on the stimulus. So the stimulus for the secretion of the milk. So prolactin is a milk secretion reflex. So the more prolactin is secreted at night, suppress the ovulation. So ovulation suppression is again an indication of contraceptive effect. That's why actually breast milk indirectly is a contraceptive effect. That's why that is one of the reasons is prolactin reflex. Actually, you can add that in the maternal advantages. I forgot to mention actually. So the second one is oxytocin reflex. It's also called as a letdown reflex. What do you call it? Letdown reflex. So what is it? It is actually the very look of the baby. Ah, the child's cry itself sends a sensory stimulus to the uh, hypothalamus and then from the pituitary, the oxytocin release. The oxytocin is released from the post pituitary hormones along with the ADH. You know? So, oxytocin gets released from this and it allows the secretion of the 
it is in let down reflex means already the milk is secreted inside the lactose but it comes out because unless the child is there you see it won't leak out actually if you see the mother's child even before they take the baby mother into the breast you can see the leaking the milk leaking from the nipple so that is called the let down reflex he makes life easier for the baby to suckle so otherwise the child has to struggle a lot to that struggle is reduced and also it is an indirect activity uh, the uterus size oxytocin every time oxytocin released as they said the involution of the uterus is much much faster so these are the two places from the mother's side from the baby side also this is the these are the how actually prolactin secret after feed is produced uh, to produce next feed action this is secretion reflex where the oxytocin on your right is a let down reflex and when the baby starts sucking the impulses from the nipple so all those things, thinking of the baby sound of the baby sight of the baby on the stimulate actually and this helps the reflex and those worry stress pain doubt all these hinder the reflex because can i feed the baby is my milk enough or this type of worries you know these are the things actually you must keep in mind so these things can suppress the oxytocin there is a, this is place where this negative effect actually so these are the negative effects on this these are the positive effects actually so like that if you remember if you remove all these negative feelings so the oxytocin reflex is stimulated and it becomes easy for the mother to give feels so for the baby side also you got the three reflexes you must be aware rooting so what is called the rooting reflex sucking reflex and spinal reflex this is the actually god made this all this it's rooting means actually if you touch because of the lip and the cheek on one side baby turns to that side that's the ideal way of you know preparing the baby to suck instead of putting nipple directly in the mouth what happens you know they may choke or actually they may just you know uh, they re reject it actually ideal way is to tell the mother to touch the cheek of the baby with the nipple so baby then turns to god that, that is called the rooting reflex that is maybe the child is getting ready for the second once the nipple is inside the mouth automatically the child starts sucking that is called a sucking reflex and once sucking is started and milk is coming down the mouth automatically they would spit it out this way it is in the pharyngeal muscles and actually so they all these things automatically they act actually done so these are the three automatic reflexes which god has built in almost because the preterm even preterm baby up to 28 weeks of gestation they can suckle and remove some milk only and by 31 weeks actually they can easily suckle much easily because if those babies very small babies will give gavage feedings because they cannot suckle that's why they get tired also so the coordination of sucking and breathing automatically develop the 32 to 35 weeks because for this is the late premature babies we call them the go 32 to 35 for this you don't need to do any special method section for small babies for the 28 and all these things you may have to do some special methods you will talk about later so at this level you can just give they can manage even the preterm babies also they can suckle let preterm especially so these reflex are developed now the most important thing is Question is many times it is asked as a short notes. What is a good attachment? Many times this happens to premature mother. That is a primary mother. Sir, you have given all the advantages of this thing, breast milk and all these things. I have been trying my best, but child is not sucking, sir. I am not getting milk and extra all this. This is a common question actually. You think, okay, which mother has tried and you give just jot down the name of formula. So that should not be there because many, many at times it is not because. The mother has not tried, but she doesn't know what exactly proper method of this. So look at the baby diagram. So on your left is a proper way of doing this. On your left, it is a wrong way of this. That's what is the opposite? Thing. So for the, what is most important for developing the attachment is for the milk development is a good attachment. There are the four cardinal signs of the good attachment. Number one is the more area should be available visible for the baby's top lip then below that so if you see the part of the areola the more areola should be above and only small area should be below that. so this is the first step the next second is the baby's mouth should be wide open because you know just you know only top of it is nothing like that. you must visibly the baby should making wide movements of the mouth you must ensure that 
The third cardinal sign, rule is the baby's lower lip is curved outwards. You see, the lower lip should be, it should be curved outside like this. You can here you can see that here. See, you can just closely observe. Here it is an outer lip is there. And the next one is the baby's chin should be touching almost the breast. So that's the most important thing is if you see the chin, if there should not be gap like this, you see, that gap is not advisable. Here you see some gap, so that is not. Here the chin is touching almost here, so that is not. Four corners said more area above than below, verbish mouth should be wide open, lower lip should be averted, and the chin should be touching them. Breast. Remember this short notes five most questions many times it is asked. Good next slide. How to prepare the mother? Actually, the, the actual way of this thing, you know, when the mother is uh, the motivation should start right in the even before birth of baby because by after birth it is too late. Actually. So the motivation means I must feed my child, they should get the all the advantages, even the antenatal clinics itself. You must educate their mother or whoever is a family because you know once they get okay, okay I will buy it in like I will go that make this thing psychologically they should be mentally prepared with that. And during the development, you know, as the baby is getting mother is getting pregnant, the size of the breast keep increasing, and the massaging the breast and expression of the colostrum maintaining the cleanliness is very, very important. Once the baby is born, the colostrum, the first. Um, few drops is called the color. We'll talk about later on. So, expression and maintaining the cleanliness, these are all the important things. She should eat more because now she has to eat for two people, not no, you know, you can't be fussy, not for your sake, but at least for your child's sake. Because most of the mothers they do not want to eat because they are afraid they may put on weight and all these misconceptions. But now they have to put on weight because of the sake of the baby. Additional rest after one hour. And light work because that's the most important thing is mother's psychological satisfaction is important. You must insist on mother to have enough rest and relaxation. And start breastfeeding within half an hour. That early as that is the most important aspect is as early as possible. Baby should get first called the colostrum. Colostrum is very, very important. We'll talk more about it in the next slide, which is rich in protein. It has particular antibodies. The small amount of colostrum produced is sufficient because in the first day, if you calculate what are the normal daily requirements and all these things, it may not satisfy in any way if you calculate. But still, because colostrum is such a rich thing, even the few drops is enough. Actually, many babies are comfortable to sleep. You need not to worry. Oh, you, I did not use 60 ml per kg, 100 ml per kg, or something like that. So. What is colostrum? These are, these are the things about colostrum I would like to see. The special milk secreted in the first two to three days after birth. So this is again short notes for you. Colostrum many times asked by most question. So what is it? It is a first milk within two to three days after delivery. Produced in small amounts, hardly 40 to 50 ml on the day one, but it's all the baby requires. That's enough. That's right. Rich in white cells. Antibodies, especially security hygiene, and it contains large percentage of protein, mineral, fat, soluble vitamins A, E, K, than mature milk. And it provides immune protection to the infant when he or she is first exposed to the microorganisms of the environment. It's a first vaccination, you can call it actually. And also, it has the epidermal growth factor, which prepares the lining of the gut to receive the nutrients in the milk. So, these are all the advantages. You remember for the advantages, and that will make you a short notes answer. So this is about the colostrum. Now comes the mature milk. What is mature milk is starts producing larger amounts. As I said, there the prolactin reflex has been stimulated, and oxytocin reflex has been stimulated. Large amount of breast milk is being secreted and being let out of this. So next two to four days after the delivery, usually, and the third day, usually infant milk. Taking about 300 to 400 ml 24 hours, that's quite normal. By fifth day, half three fourth of a liter of milk 
is very very common the mother is giving properly from day 7 to 14 milk is called as a transitional milk whether it is between the colostrum and mature milk and after two weeks it is called as a mature milk because that is usually the definitions many times they ask what is the mature milk what is the uh, transition milk transition milk is nothing but between colostrum and mature milk so usually one week to turn two weeks it takes actually to money some people some people get early some people later so that is usually the range where you get mature milk now what about the mature milk again this is a short note again and not only this from the viva many times people keep on questioning on, on your left what is this the blue colored square is a must learn for all of you whereas the, the black colored ones if you remember it's good and well and good otherwise it's okay so what are the content of the composition of the pressed milk is the calories each 100 ml gives 67 calories one ounce 30 calories actually okay so one ounce 20 calories so 100 ml 67 the protein is very less 1.1 gram only per cent but still it is a very high quality so biological value is more than 100 percent because biological value we are preparing comparing the egg albumin so this wave protein is even better than that that's why it comes bb comes here one or four or something like that and fat 3.5 lactose 7 grams lactose high content of lactose makes it a much sweeter vitamin a 60 micrograms and vitamin c comparatively very less five micrograms only very less because breast milk is little deficient in vitamin c so at least you try to remember all these values very very important from the examination point of view so calories protein and fat let's note down now the techniques how to give many times mothers will come past the most important thing is it's not the question of which of my, my mother should baby should be comfortable either sitting or lying down so you can see all the so many postures were given put the baby on one thigh or both in the like lap itself and supporting with the hands mother should hold the off the baby hold breast and not just nipple and areola here because in the only nipple and area in the mouth is not a good attachment entire breast should go into the mouth more areola should be visible above than below and the mouth should be widely open guide the nipple into the mouth mouth by touching the baby's cheek that is a rooting reflex stimulating the rooting reflex that's the proper way otherwise child may choke and breast can be alternated for started especially because you want to empty both breasts it's not a compulsory but ideal is give both breasts each time after feeding or midway through feeds make baby upright allow that is putting on the baby on the shoulder and then touching on the baby that is very important because they may they may smell as a little air so which will cause a positive positing is nothing but is spitting out the milk so putting the baby on the shoulder and make a little while and just tap it on the back make the burp, breaking the window it's called as burping so these are the principles of techniques of milk. time schedule many times the mothers keep on asking sir how to give the baby the feeding is as often as baby desires it's not you know fixed rules it's all because those rules and all those things are for those people who will give formula because the nurses have to prepare them and they have to pick a schedule for mothers no schedule baby demands you give it most babies feed differently because some settle for the rhythm within a month actually sometimes actually they keep on crying but usually by one three one month they develop some demands two hours three hours some people do but they develop their own rhythm don't worry until then as and when baby comes just give it and how long as long as the baby sucks okay you know child is not leaving only more than 15 20 minutes okay it's all it doesn't matter some people just just when they certify the sleep off some people keep on sucking let them have their satisfaction longer feed ensures plenty of energy rich hind milk what is a hind milk four milk i'll tell you in the next seven hours right so because allow the baby to settle for now no but because they get a hind milk which is rich in nutrients so baby automatically stops feeding and satisfied that you need not have you know for just say a mama or something they won't take one more sweet one more sweet in the eggs in the marriages they give you know it's like baby is satisfied he doesn't take even if you force him he won't take it up he had a three to four hour schedule feeding duration of 15 to 20 minutes that's it usually they establish as they said about one month or so it may take some time that is a usual standard actually but you need to insist on that 
at night time should i feel well because night time the baby is required right? so, so let them sleep night time also it's not like you know you can tell and you should not feel night nothing like that actually you can just while sleeping also you can just be able to rest now sir you asking me to give rest and actually i just want to know is my milk sufficient many a mother keep coming and asking sir i don't know is it sufficient it's an anxiety out of anxious you know the mothers keep asking you is my milk enough how do i know the baby is good so these are the points in favor actually as you reassure the mother most of the mother actually, they can feed actually and mothers even if she monitors short she can be the mother she give that psychological assurance first of all usually the indications are if the baby sleeps two to four hours after feed at even if the baby is awake and playful that is an indication the child has a full stomach otherwise the empty stomach they won't do like that and the child is passing five to six times urine so wait from child is producing the water passing the urine they must have water no where she is getting we are not giving any separate water now obviously she got that much of water through milk only that means that she is getting enough milk so if the baby is having five or six diaper changes more than enough actually and breaking the wind during the by feeding may help the baby to suck more because you know when the air, the air is fallow the air of age you know, the stomach fills full so actually they may stop breathing again within half an hour she may start crying and after the air is absorbed so that's why in between the break the wind it's full stomach that what little air has in the fundus of the gang stomach it goes up again the stomach is she is ready for fresh feeling so like keep on breathing the wind so that baby gets in the milk sufficient that's all these are the precautions we tell her only four points just remember them very very important in practical aspect most in spite of this we face a lot of problems so the common breast feeding problems is the lack of confidence many a time in mothers they are not sure am i getting am I out of anxiety only so first assure them psychologically most of the failures as especially the primary i told you the technique so if there is no good attachment it is cause problems and child doesn't get enough milk and keeps on crying and mother gets sore nipples and all these things and gets psychologically get tired and actually fed up and all this so you ensure proper attachment by ensuring the four cardinal signs i told you all so the maternal diet is delayed because many many mother they don't eat at all they think they will get fat or all this thing or they don't have enough milk so ensure the nutritional aspect and angle some problem problems like engorgement sore nipples and infections we have to attend them but all they come across maternal stress fatty inadequate nutrition and postpartum depression are the major factors so you have to attend if at all identify them and attend to them in time so relieve the problems so okay we do not have milk in spite of all these things there is a milk substitute sir if at all the mother has to go for a job So what should we do, sir? sir? There is no maternity leave. Most of the countries we don't give actually two months maternity leave. That's ideal, but many are private institutions. They can't afford. Especially you see, they are nurses, doctors. They have to come back to duties. Many times there is a problem. So even that condition also, you need not go for any alternative consideration. Express breast milk is the best first preference. You can express milk, keep it either in a short time, even until refrigerated. If it is a long time refrigerated, there are also techniques to express also many times. Undiluted milk normally consumed by families. The next alternative they they used to say, but the problem is below one year, cow's milk and all the liquid milks are not advisable because the chances of cow's milk protein allergy, because the intestine is not still barrier is not well developed, so absorption of the full molecules of protein, they may be recognized as a foreign by the immune system of the body. Cow's milk protein allergy develops, and there is a one of the causes for anemia loss of blood in the gut and there is several problems related to that actually so all this once the baby's gut has matured this may problem may not be immature baby gut actually they may absorb the large protein molecules and this change dangers of danger of developing allergies are there so once the gut matures this problem may not be so that's why liquid milks are not advisable below one year So commercial foods are the powder milks are there, but they are very costly. And actually, for the amount of money that we spend, are we getting it in a package? The convenience wise is okay, better, but they are costly. Many of the social, low social economy mothers, and also the literate, the illiterate mothers, especially in the villages, and they do not know how to maintain the cleanliness because it requires demands a lot of. 
cleanliness, washing, hand washing, utensil washing, and all these things are very, very important. So, whether you can make it, these are the disadvantages. So, alternate feeding mothers has some developed problems like this. So, the express breast milk can be given either with a cup, as you see in the upper picture, or with a paladai. Paladai is Ugugina in India, famous. So, you can give somebody, mother herself can give. This happens if there is a retracted nipples or sore nipples or they got body problems, temporary problems. Once they go away, in between, if you give top meal reaction, the child won't suckle at the breast. Please remember, do not get them use it to the easily getting bottle milk. So for a transient things, you can do this again, go back to the breast. And when the breast is healed or the problem is solved. Special situations. Here is a there are certain circumstances. What is it? First is the low birth weight. As I said, breastfeeding on demand express milk can be given even even preterm also. I already told you for late preterm, no problem at all. Even for the early preterms, you can give the parade milk correction with this one. Uh, to, with the garbage with tube feeding also you can do. Mother, baby is ill. Can we give milk or not? Baby can suck, and if the baby can continue suckle, that child is fit for the baby is severely sick, then the question. Otherwise, child is running a little temperature, little diarrhea, little vomiting, nothing at all. If they, as long as the baby can suckle, minor illnesses are not a contraindication for breast milk at all. And especially if there is a they may require even more frequent feedings, especially the high temperature fever is there. They may require metabolism is increased, they may require more feeding. The diarrhea is there, they may require more feeding. That's all. Maternal illness, the mother is illness, the mother is attracted, taking some medicines, actually not prescribed medicines. So if you just check it whether there are contraindications, because the each formulation they give, if, if there is definite contraindications like anti metabolites, some anti epileptic drugs are they are given, should not be given. Only such circumstances. You avoid. Otherwise, just read the instructions of the formula. You just make you learn a bit and follow direction. Now, HIV. The HIV positive needs counseling. Here, this is a very, very important thing is you have to counsel the mother whether the decision of the breast meeting or replacement feeding. We'll talk about the next slide. So, if the mother is HIV positive, what are the recommendations? The WHO recommendations are like exclusive breastfeeding for six months who are known not to be infected with HIV. Or for a mother whose HIV status is not known, we can give them. May avoid a shorter breastfeeding period and switch to replacement feeding if acceptable, feasible, and affordable. The important thing acceptable, feasible, affordable. So, because there is a risk of transmission, about 15% additional risk of transmission from mother to child through breastfeeding, either by contact. To the milk first. So, how to avoid that? If you have got alternative, that alternative should be affordable because you know, just for a few months and next month, then also my, my husband doesn't get my salary or something like that. Either if you plan it even before itself, if you have uh, no, it's not acceptable, it's not feasible, please don't start it at all. Instead, we give exclusive breastfeeding only because compared to better than that. The most important thing is. Of all these things is no no. The first no no is this one. You should never go for this one. No partial breast milk. Avoid mixed breast milk. Why it happens is this is the worst of a situation. Worst situation in the sense it has got the both disadvantage of the breast milk, the uh, top milk, and HA. This mixed milk is very very dangerous. You should never go for this at all. Either you go for exclusive breastfeeding or you go for an alternative, affordable way. This should be the The mother has to decide. You tell the all the advantages and disadvantages. Breast, disadvantages of artificial milk, what all can happen? And disadvantages of breast milk, what all can happen? So let the decision be educated, informed decision for mother. And you support it. And definitely you don't support mixed feeding at all. Whatever conditions. So in a one nutshell, if you want me to tell all these things, actually, for the baby, for the mother, you can sickle slide advantage. You get a short notes only advantage of breastfeeding. It helps for the nutrition. It is less likely to mortality and morbidities. It increases the bonding. Less likely of infections like respiratory areas, ear infections, GI infections, disorders, skin conditions, sudden infant death syndrome, all these things. 
Lower risk of chronic diseases, diabetes, asthma, and some cancers also. Lower risk of overweight and obesity with the baby. Improved cognitive and motor development. And for mother, less likely to become pregnant in early months, especially don't, don't give it as absolute because the contraceptive pill is not there. Be cautious. If the mother is absolutely wants to advise them additional contraceptive measures. Low risk of metal cancers like ovarian breast, low postpartum depression and menstrual recovery and weight loss postpartum and regression of the uterus and regaining her normal shape and all these things are maternal advantages and all in one nutshell. Now, there is another essay related to this infant and young child feeding, what is called the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. This was an initiative taken by WHO and UNICEF now back. Jointly launched this one to encourage recognize hospitals following baby friendly practices. Unfortunately, this the certification process has gone now to absolute now, but in still in the examination, they keep on asking what is the baby friendly hospital initiative. So there are the 10 commandments to follow. All of you are familiar with the famous movie 10 Commandments of Moses takes them and the hills of Jerusalem. So here the Ten Commandments are any hospital wants to get certified is baby friendly should follow these ten points. There used to be you know, inspection team like just like in our MCA people are coming like that and they inspect and they give this hospital is baby friendly certificate like that. Actually, people used to be uh, after this now actually the certificate process is not there but still people should keep on going. So according to these ten points are the first the hospital whoever is following want to follow this should have a policy, written policy regarding this. Okay, the first point is then having a written policy and this should be communicated to all the healthcare staff. So for example, doctors, nurses, and whatever, IAS, all these things. And then the next is the training of this, all these people, the doctors, nurses, IAS, and whatever, who are all coming with this, necessary to implement this. For example, observing what is good attachment, mother is under, educating the mothers, but the following of the whenever there is a problem is there, but they not all these things must be able to do all these things. Inform the pregnant woman the benefits of making and management of breastfeeding because you have to take all the psychological advantages, physical advantage, all this, you know, those points I told you. So the mother should be aware of this, even at the time antenatal stage itself. And help the mother initiate breastfeeding within half an hour because even in the labor room itself, we are telling now, give the mothers breastfeeding action. So let them have the mothers sexual even the, within half an hour is important. Show mothers how to breastfeed, how to maintain lactation, even if they are separated. I told you to parody feeding or actually the gugina feeding, cup feeding, and how to store it, even if she wants to go for a job or something like that. All these things you must be able to tell mothers. Who else will tell? Number six is give newborn infant no other milk than breast because some people give them sugar, water, all these things, just the bomb, wasa, wasa, all these things. Exclusive breastfeeding means nothing else. Nothing means nothing. Even in mid-summer, not even a drop of water because other milk has enough water. So that is called exclusive breastfeeding. It is rooming in seventh point is rooming in actually I must say it is a bedding in also see mother and child should be having in the same same room. So previously what they used to do in a special vest to give mother rest all the babies are taken away from kept, kept in a separate room only at the time of the milk feeding they used to bring it a fixed timing so all these things are bad practices. They were doing in the world war times actually they don't have enough personal to care all those things but now it's realized Mother and child should be in the same room, visibly and ideally in the same bed. Also, even the cradle beside the bed also should be kept empty. Only for the same, if the mother is very feeling discomfort, then only should be baby should be bed in the cradle. Otherwise, beside the mother, that's the best. Bedding in, we call it as. Encourage breastfeeding on demand. No, there is no fixed timings. I said no, baby cries, you give that. That's the best method actually. That is called as a demand feeding. Actually. No artificial dates, especially this is very common. In a western, they, 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 they call the suckers. They could, and the child is crying, put, the, put it in the mouth. That's just, there's like a seal, smoothers, so dummies, they call it. There's a very, very practice because they don't sterilize it. And next moment, you see the dummy floating on the bed or something. Again, the mother takes it and keeps it in the mouth. When you give water, you boil it so much, and this stuff, this uh, dummies just they drops it and again puts it in the mouth. Very, 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 very
proliferating infections. And then the last point is the faster establishment of breastfeeding supporting groups because how much you tell mothers, ah, doctor, please, if you want to take it, you know, no, but they build another picture because you and students will go and tell them, they look down at you. What experience this young girl or actually young boy? He hardly knows anything. He himself looks like a baby. He's telling me something like that. So always, if it is a mother who has already pregnant, if it comes from me, they don't the peers. Relation, then it is going to be that's why those mothers who are successfully fed they are best teachers for them. So develop that breastfeeding support groups, refer mothers to them. If the mother is not willing to not listening to words, your words, just tell them. See, they will tell, come on, I also paid the almost problem. They came across, you can also do that. That that gives them a lot of experience than this. So these 10 points, please remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These 10 points are the baby friendly hospital initiative. So the question comes. Now we go to the next topic. The complementary food is very, very important. So complementary foods are those. What do you mean by complementary foods? Those other than milk or infant formula introduced to the infant to provide the nutrients. So that is the definition. Any food which is in addition to that milk or breast milk. It may be solid, liquid or semi-solid. So these are essential. Why is it important? After six months, the nutritional demands of the baby are much, much more increased. So here he needs to, this milk is not met by the breast milk alone. It is essential to prevent growth faltering. This is the time with growth faltering may happen in late infancy. And if you delay the introduction, the child may fall into nutrition gap. That is more nutrition. So this is explained in the next slide very diagrammatically. Look at this child. This baby is born in the first six months, the lick baby and the exclusive breast failing. Okay, go on, baby. After that, what happens in the time of six months comes, if you're not given proper feeding, you follow the malnutrition. This is called as malnutrition trap. Again, a short notes for you. So there is you have started solid treatment, but there the gap was there actually. So until he able to eat well. The child, because that is a late infancy, marasmus is very, very common at this stage. That is called as a malnutrition trap. You can diagrammatically represent that instead of picture, you can put a you put a marasmus vector. So this is a short note. This slide itself is a short note for you. Then how to overcome it? Next way. So again, let us see here. This is the problem. Is it? what the problem is? They may fall into the ditch. You can see the malnutrition. That is a gap. So you have to fill that gap. How do you fill that gap? Number one is vegetable protein mixtures, whatever is available. Mixture of protein and vegetable mixture, whatever it is, these pulses, cereals, all have the proteins. And animal protein, which is available because for vegetarians, the problem. Non vegetarians, you can even give them the non veg supplements also. For even with those people with the who will take milk has got a big protein, no? that itself is animal protein, wherever it is possible, you can take it. And we said six, six, six months only, not necessarily, even after that, continue that, that is animal protein itself, you know. So these three strategies, adding vegetable protein mixture, utilizing what available milk protein, or the animal protein is there, and continuing the breast milk, in spite of it. Six months also. How many planks are there? We added three planks. That is called the three plank protein bridge. That is a short note for you. Again, see each slide is a short note. Let's remember the why walls they may ask. So, what are the three planks of this? These three. Number one, vegetable protein. Number two, animal protein. Third is breast protein. Now we will ask the baby. Okay, now come on, man. Just now this two. and also added that there is a safety net. I will tell you about safety net later on. So and even if you fall, you just you catch him right. So with this protection, now we will ask the baby to walk. See, she just passing on. He didn't fall under that. He did? No. So he passed on this dangerous trap and with her safely reached the other end of the, you know, until he did the family part feeding safe. So this is each one is a short note. Three plank protein bridge, safety net, and this is now. So complementary food should be high. easy to digest, semi-solid because the child has not yet developed teeth. It low in bulk and viscosity, thick is meaning you cannot swell. Fresh and clean, inexpensive, easy to prepare. These are the characteristic of any complementary foods. So the, the short notes is on complementary foods. You have to write all these things. It must be cheap, easily available, 
and easily digestible, inexpensive, is it easy to prepare, fresh and clean, and all these things. Four points you remember. The complementary food can be home based food and family diets in man veg. You see, in home, what you are eating, then these can they can make it actually. Food grains in it. You know, these are cereal and pulse mixtures, very well done. Ragi mixture, like this. They are also commercially available. You have heard of the cereal like Farrex, all this, the nest of these are all commercially available. So they, those people who do not have time for this, very, very busy people, mother and father, actually employed, no elders, those people deserve that actually, but they are not that good actually. <laughs> Home based or ideally why is this cereals and pulses mixed usually? Because you know, cereals are dip. What is the limiting amino acid cereals? It is lysine. Whereas pulses limiting amino acid is sulfur containing amino acid, methionine. But if you mix them to pulses and cereal, they become as good as animal proteins. So that is ideal mean Papu Bella and Tarjusan, Papu Dinsulu and Kai Dinsulu. So these things mix them. And seasonal vegetables or fruits, whatever, whichever fruit you can mash, you can just it. Papaya, orange, or actually apple, support all these mix, either separately or with cereals. You can do milk products like curd, paneer, kheer, can you all these and fats can be added to this. You can eat ghee is the best one. Eggs, meat, poultry, fish, if acceptable. You see, when a child comes about nine months or eight months, you can add egg also. So ideally, initially yellow and then white because you will see a white allergies. So you can mix separately or semi-boiled, half-boiled, all these things you can try. Means there is a tuna given usually many people use as it is. It's a tuna, fresh tuna, poultry products like this. Eggs should be boiled and cooked for scrambled because unboiled you should not use because they must be Biotin deficiency because everything is in prevents absorption with biotin. So never give and dry except. The commercial foods are they interfere with the efficiency of chewing because you know very, very soft ones actually. Now they are developing crunchy ones also, but usually most of the commercials are soft ones. They do not the chewing is not enough, they simply swallow. And the monotonous things in the begin. People say they keep on changing variety of each thing actually like that are not like a daily you cannot change all these things. So the polytextured foods are ideally for all your favorite so open. So you less said about the commercial food, that's better. The guidelines are food is given between the breastfeeds, avoid diluting foods, making the food too spicy, don't make them, or too sweet also. Encourage once the child is reaching one year and to mouth the report and should stop. And and never give force. If you're spitting out, don't force it. Actually, no, you should finish up whatever I mix. Actually, that's very bad for us. Baby should be fed from separate bowl and plate to have an accurate idea about the amount of feeds. Not from your and as while you are eating, you just keep a little once in a feed, you know. Not like that's not better. Actually, you don't know how much child has eaten. Babies may have food preferences, it's common. Just understand. Variety in foods always. We can keep, don't keep on the same variety thing actually. Keep on one day cereal, one day mixture with something, one day ragi, one day oatmeal, something like that. Keep on changing the taste, colors, and all those things actually. So start at six months. Mashed fruit, banana, cereal like thing, atta. Give family foods soften four to five meals and up to nine months. Nine months onwards, you can put mash and chop and allow chewing. Actually, you can give a carrot piece and yeah, let him chew on it because they got a nibbled teeth. Baby can eat almost anything, everything cooked in the house. So even chapatis and all this, they, they can eat actually once they get teeth. The one year, they increase the amount of food that mother eats. They should be able to have half the amount of mother food. You just remember, it, and it, looks, it sounds a little ghastly, but they, yes, they can eat half the mother's food actually. Always try to include lean vegetables and seasonal foods. They like broccoli and green cucumber, such things, because they are good in rich in fiber. Right. So I was talking about the safety net. Safety net is nothing but a short term used for the supplementary feeding. There's the additional additional foods. Group eating because the child and along let them sit on the table when the child comes to be one or two years and let them eat with us. And Akshay Patra is See, they choose us. You, give the, you know the Akshay Patra in Mahabharata, you know? So whatever you ask, you'll get it. Like the you know, this food uh, plate should contain all varieties of foods, actually. Then some are green, some are pink, orange. Some be varied colors of foods, like broccoli, beetroot, carrot, and uh, potato, 
and uh, cauliflower such things you can give them each one in a different color let him choose from the that that's it he has all colors in front of him all varieties in front of him let him choose that possible that is called as akshay patra technique so these are the i would call safety net means supplementary feeding group eating and such that's good. so if you want one slide nutshell and preliminary feeding sir timely adequate appropriate and safe good for optimal growth less likely to die with mortality less diarrhea and respiratory infections improves cognitive feedings better psychological development improves productivity and less risk of zinc and other micron deficiencies less risk of anemia prevention of overweight and obesity prevention of stunting and of mind these are the all the advantages in one nutshell if you want to just see one slide that's all then all of you i will advise you to remember this nymphes what is meant by nymphes many times why why people ask this question nymphes is nothing but nutrition and growth monitoring the young child feeding but is very very important things i for immunization prevention of the infections m is maternal medical checkups and medical curing during illness f is family welfare the timing limiting and spacing of the families even regarding the mother craft that is all how to bring up the child environment cleanliness personal hygiene and all these child rearing techniques and stimulation that is the development of serving and tender loving care without that children cannot achieve their potential so all in include is this the diagram they give in fess those you people who want a little additional marks you better practice this diagram and in the examination you get excellent first top marks management of breastfeeding difficulties finally i just some problems will be there full breast happens 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 in the first few days because of the suddenly milk is secretion and as milk comes in the feel mother is engorged milk and actually am swelling and painful also the best way is keep on feeding the child that's the best treatment actually it is a tension thing give a little hot fermentation yes this engorgement is there painful edematous that is if you can't the child is not sucking well then Try to express with hand. There is a technique given by hand hand expression. I am not covering it here. Actually, you can see the textbook. And few times, and becomes the chain breast becomes softer and chain can take. So there is a sore nipple because that I always develop because there are faulty techniques. Chain cuts with the mother, and once it continually gone, if you notice, no notice, it is a vicious cycle. That's why give proper teach proper attachment. This sore nipple will develop. And if at all there is developed actually. The fissure nipple, because you know, apply the proper, give the proper techniques and teach them uh, topical application of illicit and uh, soothing ointments may be a bit done. And proper technical solvent action. Inverted making this happens because you know the fibrous tethers are there in the chain. Breast is suddenly engorgement. Then there is a tendency attached to the inside of the nipple. So the nipple gets pulled inside. That happens many times in spite of your care. So if you that baby has difficulty in catching the nipple, then the, the area where I only go so it doesn't nipple it doesn't go inside. How to suck very difficult is that. So if you come notice that this is a technique using the syringe method. Ordinary syringe you take cut on the you know, the front, the end of the the outlet side and remove the spillet and put it in the back because this inlet side has got a ring is there you no know, that won't hurt the nipple. So put it the, uh, on the nipple and try to pull the Still at outside, so it will drag a suction like that. So then this diagram, whenever nipple retraction, the treatment, you put this diagram, the result explained. That's all. Thank you all. This is about the infant and young child feeding. Any questions? You can ask. So all of you, you can download this one thing when I upload this thing. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, shall I end this?